how you doing? So in this video, we take a look at how to replace the capacitors in a Sega Game Gear. Now, why would you want to do that, you ask? Well, when these were manufactured back in the early 90s, there seemed to be a whole lot of bad capacitors going throughout the whole games industry. They were fine at the time, uh, but 20 years down the track, they're really starting to show their age, and it's really not uncommon these days to come across a Sega Game Gear that does not work because the capacitors in it have blown. Um, luckily, it's a very easy fix to do, and that's what this video is about. So, let's get on to the theory about it. What you want to do, well, I'll just tell you basically what you want to do. You want to uh, open this up, desolder all the bad capacitors, just do the ones, well you can either just do the ones that have blown, or you can do all of them. I'd probably recommend doing all of them, because they haven't blown yet, they will soon. So desolder all the old capacitors, then you get brand new capacitors and solder those ones in. And then once it has new capacitors that aren't blown, that can make a power connection, it's gonna work and you'll be able to play Sonic and everything will be merry. Now, what do I say next? Yes, uh, this project will be in two parts. On the main board is all the capacitors basically for the video and process. Well, actually, I don't know what they do. I know they've got to do with the video. Um, I'm actually just talking out of my ass. But replacing those will fix the video, but won't fix the sound. All the sound capacitors are on their own separate board. But we'll get that. We'll get to that in the due course of the video, and I'll show you how to do that. So do not worry. Now, I'll tell you what you do need to complete this project. You will need a Game Gear, preferably broken. A test game. You will need capacitors. Brand new capacitors. If you look online on eBay, you can usually buy kits that come with all the capacitors you need for this job, including the sound capacitors. You will need a soldering iron, preferably around 25 watts. You don't want to go too hot, because then you might start melting things. Uh, you will need a screwdriver set. A basic screwdriver set will do. I bought mine for $2 from an electronics store. You will also need game bits to take the security screw out. You can also buy these on eBay. They don't cost more than a couple of dollars. You will also need nose needle pliers. Okay, now some theory so you will know which capacitor to replace with what, basically, so shut up. Now, on each capacitor you will see two sorts of uh, denominations, I guess. Like, I don't know. But, as you can see here, on this one here, it says 6.3 volts and then it says 100. Uh, the 100 stands for the microfards. So when you get a new capacitor, you want to make sure that the microfards is exactly the same. Now with the voltage, it can be 6.3 or higher. Of course that's just an example, not all of them are 6.3 volts, but as long as it's at a minimum 6.3 volts, it will be okay. The reasoning for this is because that's how much current is running through that capacitor. So if you found like a capacitor that was 100 volts, there would still be 6.3 volts running through it and it would be none the wiser. But however, if you got something that was 3 volts and then 6.3 volts started running through it, you would blow it up. Um, so yeah, you don't want to do that. But uh, just to recap, 6.3 volts or higher for that or whatever it is and the microfiles needs to be exactly the same Now there will be a minus and a plus um, Usually with capacitors when you get them or when you buy them the longer leg is the one that's the plus or the positive I should say um, The one that would be the shorter leg will be the negative uh, Usually on the capacitor they also mark on which side is the negative You'll have to make sure that these match up on the board um, you, with the uh, solder points, uh, usually, well with this Sega Game Gear anyway, there is a positive symbol, which is a plus symbol. So you got to make sure the positive matches up with positive and the negative matchups with positive. Sorry, <laughs> what am I saying? you got to make sure that the positive matches up with positive and the negative matches up with negative. Um, so yeah, do that and you will not fail. Disclaimer, this is just an instructional video and I'm just a man. Repair your Sega Game Gear at your own risk. I will not take any responsibility for injury caused to yourself or your cat. I will also take no responsibility for damage caused to your Sega Game Gear. Also, please note that repairing your Sega Game Gear in this fashion will avoid the Sega warranty. <laughs> so first off, we have to dismantle the Sega Game Gear. There's six Phillips head screws and one special security screw, which is just on the Sega Game Gears, which is where the Game Bit tool will come in handy. Okay. 
I'm going to start with the security screw. It's generally the most hardest one to get out. It's the most stiff. But if you are uh, give you a rough of it. Now, as I said, there's six Phillips head screws. There's one here, one here, one here, one here. And the other two are under the battery covers. Okay, from here you can separate it. Be careful though, because there is some cables connecting the top half to the bottom half. These are as simple as, you just gotta disconnect them. You don't wanna pull them too hard though, because you don't want the wires coming out of the plastic bit. So there's three in total. Yeah, like this one here, it's been a bit stubborn. You just wanna kind of wriggle it out. Like so. Now for the fun part. Now I'm going to desolder the old capacitors from my old game gear from the project which I screwed up like two years ago. And then I'm going to desolder the dead capacitors in this new unit which just arrived today. And I'm going to solder in the brand new capacitors from the old project into that. And hopefully everything will work out nicely. Okay, for this example, I'm going to desolder this little guy here. Um, as you can see, uh, my previous job was pretty shit, so let's uh, rectify that. So you just want to heat up the old solder point until it comes loose, basically. Oops. Yeah, like so. And it's free. Ready to go on to the new one. Okay, now I swap the, uh, the old project to the new one. As you can see, I've already done one here. But um, out of the old game gear, I just took this one out here. So basically they're glued to the board. So you want to get some pliers and just lightly break the, uh, the glue free. Don't pull it out though, because if you pull it out, you're going to pull the uh, solder contact straight out of the board and it's going to brick the whole thing. Uh, this is how I screwed up my last project. So yeah, don't do that. Uh, but yep. Then same thing, like, like I did with getting the uh, the new capacitor out of the other one. You just want to heat this one up at the contact points and uh, break it free, essentially. What I also like to do is put down some fresh solder, because yeah, why not? It always helps things. But you don't want to put too much down because uh, it may cause a cold contact point. Okay, see there is a, a stripe on the side of the capacitor there. That means that is the negative. Where there's no stripe, that is the positive. So basically the positive's on the uh, right hand side here and the negative's on the left hand side. You're just gonna make sure they match up. And also you don't want to uh, cover this gold contact point up here, because if you cover that up, you won't be able to close the case. So yeah, uh, now we're just gonna solder this back into place. Oops. Find all these rooms and I'm doing something. Never when I'm bored. It's a bit tricky. There we go. Done and done. And now I've just got to do the rest of the board. Okay, now that I've finished soldering all the caps, I can plug the cables back in. Which I've already done, and then we'll screw it back in temporarily just to see if that works. 
and if it didn't work, we'll go from there, and if it did work, we'll do the sound capacitors. The sooner I finish this, the sooner I can play Grand Theft Auto 5, which I bought about an hour ago. Okay, now for the moment of truth. For this, we're gonna try Pac Man. Do, 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 do. Oh, and it works. Except we do have some lines going across there. And. The audio doesn't work. I knew the audio wouldn't work though because I've taken the old back from my other console and put it onto this one. Because in the new one, all the battery compartments were corroded. It looks like some batteries are uh, leaked in them. Um, but yeah, now we know that it works. I don't know, this is... Buttons are a bit sticky. Maybe we can open that up and have a look. It's a cool thing about having two consoles now. I can actually just mix and match parts. No, oh, good left. Yeah, wicked. Let's try something else. Okay, what else do we have? Bart versus the world? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not actually entirely sure what's causing those lines. Um, I'll probably have a break from this. Uh, because I want to play Grand Theft Auto 5, essentially. I've been waiting five years for it, so I'm going to play that. And I think I'm going to continue with this tomorrow. But I'll also do some Googling around. Maybe I've... I don't know if the screen's busted, or maybe... Uh, I don't know, there's a capacitor I haven't sold it in properly, but... Yeah, no, we'll go from there. Well, here we are, day two. A bit tired. Stayed up to 2am last night playing GTA 5. Uh, worth it, but... Um, my goal for today is finish fixing this game gear. Um, I'm not allowed to play GTA 5 until I finish this game here. Uh, so basically today we're going to have a look at the sound capacitors. Yesterday I finished all the video capacitors and some weird lines coming across the screen, but from what I can tell so far, um, that's not related to capacitors. That might be something else. So maybe that can be a, uh, a different video. I'll keep it simple, we'll just keep to the capacitors for this video. So basically, all the capacitors are on their own separate board, which is on the bottom half. So yeah, let's get to dismantling it. But otherwise, the same theory remains the same. We've just got to uh, remove these capacitors here and uh, put in the new ones. Okay, so this is actually the first time I've ever done this. Uh, with my last project, I didn't get this far because I screwed it up when I was just doing the video capacitors. Um, so yeah, I guess we're just gonna learn about this together. Um, my information for this I got from a very informative channel on YouTube called Stig's Game Room. So I will link the video where he talks about the sound capacitors uh, just so you can compare mine and his. But yeah, let's get to it, I guess. Um, so we start off with getting this metal plate off. So that's just a case of doing these four screws here, I guess. Okay, now that the metal shielding's off, we just have to uh, remove two screws that are holding the soundboard in. And voila, it's free. Uh, just a side note, this other board here is the power board, uh, but we're not going to worry about that today because for some reason the capacitors in this don't really seem to uh, burst like they do with the sound and video. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to leave that today. No point fixing something that isn't broken. Okay, for this I'm going to start off with just replacing these two small caps right here because these are the ones that are most prone to failure. Um, if that fixes the sound problem, I'm not going to bother with these ones. Um, 
They may die further down the track, but I do have the other capacitors. So we're just gonna start with those two. If uh, those don't work, well, if it doesn't fix the problem, yeah, we'll go on to those ones. And bam, corny transition. Here we are about, well, surprisingly, actually about a week later since the last shot that I filmed. Uh, why a week later, you ask? Well, I ran into some more complications. But, not to do with the capacitors, something else to do. So I thought, considering I've come, what I've, I've achieved what I've come to do, I've replaced the capacitors and I've fixed the system as far as that's concerned, I thought I'd wrap this video up. I mean, when it comes to uh, fixing electronics like this, like this, obviously there's a lot of variables involved. So yeah, I just want to wrap the video up. So basically, I replaced the sound capacitors in this and everything went as planned. Um, but then, as I was putting everything back together, the uh, contrast wheel fell off. Um, seriously, I've got to hand it to it. This repair is just throwing surprises at me. That is the last thing that I expected to fall off. So that fell off and I can't attach it and now I can't change the contrast. So it's stuck on a crappy contrast, but it does turn on and I do have sound. See, um, so yeah. It's, I've come a long way since I, when I first got the uh, actual device itself. Because when I first got it, it didn't even turn on. Um, what I'm going to do with the contrast wheel is I'm actually going to desolder the contrast wheel off my old Sega Game Gear from uh, a couple of years ago and solder it on back to this. Uh, but who knows how long that's going to take and if it's going to go successful. So while the thing still turns on, I thought I'd wrap up the video. But yeah, so I can kind of play it, but not really. Either way, thank you for watching the video, I'll catch you next time.